Bay start talk-ins out there. Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. I have with me for this explainer video, Ray Kurzweil, one of the largest exponents in civilization of the singularity. What it is, where it's coming from, where is it going, why, is it good, is it bad, is it ugly? Ray, please tell us, what is a singularity? You wrote about this in 2005, the singularity is near. And then you've got a book coming out in 2023, the singularity is nearer. Part, you sound a little like a cult leader, you know? <laughs> the end is coming, join my group. So tell us, what is the singularity? A couple of steps. The first step is for computers to actually match what humans can do. So we're not there yet. Turing actually has a very good test for it called the Turing yeah, test. Alan Turing, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he uh, defined that in 1950. And we have that in mind. But just to be clear, so the, the movie The Imitation Game was basically a profile of his work, especially uh, decoding uh, the, the, the Nazi... Yeah. Uh, uh, what was the Nazi it? messages, which was very key. That was actually the third computer that ever, was ever created. Right, general purpose computer. Okay, so go on, I interrupted. Continue. So I, I actually predicted that we would pass the Turing test by 2029, and I predicted that in 1999, and AI experts were dubious about that. Uh, they held an international conference based on my prediction. Uh, and they took the very first poll of AI experts, and AI experts were saying, "It's uh, yes, it will happen, but it's going to take 100 years. And actually, 20% of the AI experts thought it would never happen. And the, the, and the Turing test is, if I remember from my early computing days, it's you, you have this interface, and you have a conversation with that interface. And if you cannot tell that the thing is not human, then whatever that is, it has passed the Turing test. Is that yeah, a fair? exactly. Uh, okay. So if you really can't tell the difference, the computer has passed the Turing test. Now we realize now that in order to pass the Turing test, it's actually going to have to dumb itself down. <laughs> well, I mean, take, for example, playing Go, which is just one of thousands of skills that humans have. This is the ancient Chinese game, which is way more yeah. complex and challenging than chess. Yeah. Yes. Or, or take chess. I mean... Uh, if a computer can do it, it goes way past what humans can do. Uh, so, and it's going to do that in every field. So it's not like you just know go or not. I mean, there's many different levels of playing, and that's true of everything that we do. And so, so it'll have to dumb itself down. Otherwise, you would be able to tell it's a computer because it's so much better than you at it, not because it hasn't reached your level. That's like a crazy inverse... Uh, invocation of the Turing test. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and there's a lot of art to doing that. But uh, so, but we we create this tool basically to enhance ourselves. I mean, we want to advance technology, uh, and so we created uh, these machines that can go way past us. Uh, the way to do that is to actually bring that a, that intelligence into ourselves. And during the 2030s, we're going to be able to enhance our own intelligence by bringing AI into ourselves. So it's not just going to be humans versus machines. They're going to be together, and we're going to be more uh, advanced because we're going to, we'll have AI inside but us. I can hold a smartphone in my hand, which gives me access to the... Every... Yes, it does. It does that somewhat. Isn't but... that the same thing? Except I don't. It doesn't require neurosurgery for me to gain access to the. Well, you don't have to use neurosurgery. I mean, there's ways to to do this. You have ways. <laughs> you have you have to yeah, do it with your fingers. And we have ways. <laughs> um, I've I've done some reading about nanobots. Is that ready for prime time or not? No, but I believe it will be ready in the 2030s. And these are um, small, they're basically small machines that live in your brain and communicate with the internet. Exactly. And so that's going to make us smarter. Now, if you look at my price performance of computation, it, it, it continues, and we can actually talk about what these future computers will look like. So this is, this is computations per second per dollar. 
Right, so constant dollar. We're a constant dollar, and that's been something that has grown exponentially over the past hundred years, basically. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So ultimately, we'll be able to amplify our intelligence a million fold because we only have so much ability to put things together in our physical brain. Uh, so we'll go way past that. Uh, so it's one thing today when we think of smart people, they just know a lot of stuff, right? But anyone plus a smartphone knows a lot of stuff. So I think the real value of intelligence when we think about it and use the term is your ability to solve a problem that no one could solve before. When you say we amplify our intelligence by a million fold or pick any factor, are we going to be able to solve problems that were previously intractable? I mean, we're doing that now with AI uh, and s solving really key problems that are important for medicine and so on uh, that humans would never be able to do. So once that's inside us, we'll be able to solve problems that we couldn't solve before. All right. So what you're saying is that these, these apocalyptic AI storytellers that have done this in TV shows and in film, that's AI disembodied from us somehow achieving consciousness, all right, and then turning on us, you know, violating one of the, you know, the Asimovian laws of robotics, right? You can't turn on your creator. Uh, but if it's part of us, then we just, everyone is just simply enhanced. Is that, is that where you see this is going? So that's a, that's a very positive outlook on this. But, you know, we get to a point where we're enhanced so much that it's hard to imagine what that will be like. Uh, so that's why we use the term singularity. I mean, singularity, you know, started in You mass. took my word. I just want you to know. We had, my black holes are singularities and you took it. Just, I want you to atone for that at some point. <laughs> started in math, physics. Uh, yeah, there's a math, sorry. In all fairness, there was a mathematical singularities that predate, that's before, and then physics, and then we, and okay. astrophysics. And now you all put it into computing, but go on. Physics took it because you had something that had a gravity that's beyond uh, what we can normally uh, occur. So, so, so if somebody has enough gravity, everything falls into it, nothing comes you out of it. You got a black hole singularity. We, we got it. Okay. Now you took the uh, word and you're referring to, you're, you're referring to a point in cultural time and, and space where everything after that will be different from everything before. Exactly, exactly. Uh, because we'll have multiplied our intelligence a million fold, and it's very hard to imagine what that'll be like. And if everyone has it multiplied by a million fold, it would be hard to wonder how we got that far without that intelligence, <laughs> if you look back. You wouldn't want to go back. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> you wouldn't want to. I, so I would look forward to solutions. You wouldn't want to go back today to what, what things were like in the past uh, is already amplified by uh, intelligence using our phones and so on. Right, right, right. Well, this is quite the quite the scenario you're painting here. So, you, so it, so just to put some closure on this, in your judgment, the greatest fears that AI experts bring to the table are unfounded because that's simply not the direction it's going to go. I mean, there are dangers. I mean, you can imagine weapons amplified by AI, which could be quite dangerous. Uh, so I'm not saying there's no dangers, um, but I, I am optimistic that we can make positive use of this. Uh, provided it's part of who we are rather than something external to us. Yeah, exactly. And this idea that there's a consciousness if we're a million times smarter, are we a million times more conscious? Uh, do we, are, are we a million times more moral? Are there other, these intangibles here? Well, I would, I would say so. Because I mean, if you look at, I mean, I believe animals, higher animals are conscious, but are we more conscious than a mouse? I mean, a mouse, uh, you know, keeps its own, uh, wants to continue its own, uh, uh, wants to stay alive. It has a lot of the things that we have, but they're not quite as intelligent as we are, so we don't think about them as, as much as uh, we think about humans. Uh, how about an insect? I mean, they have they, they also maintain their own 
posture in the world, but they're not quite as intelligent as humans. Um, so for more intel more creative, more intelligent, have more memory, uh, we will be more conscious. And by whatever that means, it'll, it's a certainty, I guess, whatever that'll be. Well, Ray, I hope, you know, you've also written a lot, no time to get into it here, but you've also written a lot on longevity and living forever and what, how machines will, a machine body interface will empower that. So I hope you live long enough to see everything you're predicting so that we can yeah. cheer you or mock you <laughs> for what you have said. I hope we both live long enough to see that. So Ray, thanks for spending just these few minutes with Star Talk, an explainer video on the singularity from the man himself, Ray Kurzweil. Until next time, Neil deGrasse Tyson, keep looking up. <laughs>